Hi, boys and girls. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope I find you well. Let's pray. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you that you are the only true God. We thank you for today's lesson. We pray that you bless our time. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, boys and girls, many years ago, I heard of this joke, which I will try and say. So there was this father and son. So the father was a priest of this temple where there are so many idols in the building and a different one would worship them. Uh, so the father and the son were responsible for cleaning these idols and making sure they look presentable so that people could come and worship them. So one day the father had to go for a trip. So he was going to go away. And then the son was going to be responsible for that temple, for cleaning the idols and making sure they are all okay. This young man happened to bump into another young man who was a Christian. So he told him about Jesus. He told him that uh, Jesus was the only way to get to the Father, the only true God, and that he was alive. Well, cut a long story short, that young man became a Christian. Now he had a problem. He was supposed to be looking after those idols. So he went back to the temple and he started destroying them, cutting them and doing everything and destroying every one of those idols. Well, the father came back and he said, what happened here? Who destroyed all these gods of ours? The young man said, they told me to destroy them. And the father says, stop saying that. These idols don't speak. And the young man says, dead, I have found a true God who speaks. These idols, yes, like you say, they don't speak. But I know of a true God who speaks. Well, boys and girls, um, we have a very interesting story today, which we find in 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 16 to 46. King Ab's wife Jezebel had introduced the worship of gods from her Canaanite religion. The Canaanites believed that their god, Baal, made things grow and they thought he had authority over rain. Both the Israelites and the Canaanites offered sacrifices of animals or food which were bent on altars. That stones that were piled up and offered to their God. Now, Elijah, if you remember last week, had told King Ahab that God was going to send a drought. That there would be no rain until him, that's Elijah, the prophet of God, had said so. You remember last week we talked that you are mostly water and that if there is no water, there is all kinds of problems. So the drought had gone on for three years and King Ab was very angry. So but when uh, Ahab saw Elijah in verse 17, say to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? Verse 18, I have not made trouble for Israel. Elijah replied, But you... And your father's family have. You have abandoned the Lord's commands and have followed the bars. Elijah told King Ahab to gather together all the people of Israel and the prophets of Baal and come to Mount Carmel. There Elijah stood up and asked the people, how much longer will you try to have things both ways. He challenged them to choose between one true God and the false God, Baha. But the people would not choose. Then Elijah suggested, 
that they have a contest to see who was the true God. The rules were simple. Two bulls were to be brought to offer as sacrifices. Baal's prophets were to take one bull and kill it, then place it on the altar without lighting the fire. Then Elijah would do the same. Each of them would pray to their own God to send a fire to burn the offering. The God who answered with fire was the real God. Everyone agreed that this was a fair contest. Baal's prophets went first. They got the bull ready and prayed to Baal to send down the fire. They prayed all morning. They shouted and danced, but there was no answer. Elijah laughed at them. You need to read this part, boys and girls, in verse 25. I says, Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is God. Perhaps he's in deep thought or busy or traveling. Maybe he's sleeping and must be wakened. So they shouted louder, slashed themselves with swords and spears as their custom until blood flowed midday past. They continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Elijah used 12 stones to build an altar in honor of the Lord. He dug a ditch around the altar and poured water over it, soaking the bull and the wood. Then Elijah prayed to God to send down the fire and burn up the sacrifice. And God did. The people bowed and shouted, The Lord is God. After that, God sent rain upon the land and ended the drought. Now, boys and girls, um, as you grow up, you will have opportunities to travel. You go to all kinds of countries. You will find that they have their gods there. Some of them have lots and lots of gods and they worship them. They're either idols, they're either things that we don't see. In some cases, they're animals or they're things that people have built to worship. There is one true God, boys and girls. We did the Ten Commandments. People today are worshiping all kinds of gods. Others even say, no, I don't worship any God. Now, you are going to come across that. Today, some of you may be at school. You are meeting other children who believe other things. And you get to try and say, my God is the true God. And the other one say, their God is the true God. Well, maybe you're not Elijah. But what you can tell that boy or that girl is that Jesus loves them. Boys and girls, today we are challenged. God wants us to show the true love of God. Even those people who don't believe what we believe in, show them that you love them with the love of Jesus Christ. If, so that they see that there is a difference. That you don't care about how we look like. That you don't care whether someone has this or doesn't have this. But just show them the love of Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, we are going to come across what people call peer pressure. Where people try and force you to do things that are not right. Well, if you see Ahab's wife caused the husband, the king, to start worshipping. And many other people started doing things. Boys and girls, 
let's not give in. Even if everyone is doing it, say to them, I worship the true God. I will not do that. Do not give in to peer pressure, boys and girls. The other people will mock you as a Christian. You go to some places, you may not even be allowed to worship the true God. But boys and girls, let's respond with the love of God to every one of these people. They are the children who may start worshipping strange things. Now, boys and girls, don't give in to that. There is many bad things that are happening today. There are all kinds of people who are worshipping strange things today. There is only one true God who can get to through Jesus Christ. So I ask you today, which God are you worshipping? Elijah demonstrated the true God. Baal is not the true God. All these idols don't speak. There is one God, boys and girls, who speaks. And let's make that choice. Let's choose to say, I will worship the true God who I get to through Jesus Christ. So you will be called upon, maybe at school, maybe at some place, to confess your faith, to go public with your faith in Jesus Christ and say it and say, I serve the true, powerful God. To say it, that there is no other name in this world that is worthy to be worshipped but the name of Jesus Christ. You will be challenged, boys and girls. You will look like you're the only one. Everyone else is worshipping these strange things. But I want to say to you today, this is the time before you even get there to confess your faith, to say it in public, to tell members of the family who don't believe in Jesus that you are a Christian. You worship the true God. There are things that you don't do. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the only way to the Father, the true God. I pray for every boy and girl. I commit them to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That when they find themselves in situations like Elijah did find himself. Lord, that you will answer them when they call upon your name. You will show your power that you are the true God. That there is no other God in this world but you alone. So I pray for them. And I commit them, Lord, that in their weakness... Thank you, Lord, that your grace is sufficient. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for helping them to defend the faith, to keep the faith and run a good race. In Jesus' name, amen.